Okay, so we're recording now too, so hello everybody and welcome to Dendron Office Hours. Uh, I have shared a Google Doc link in the Tea Time channel and these sessions are recorded so they will be uploaded to a YouTube playlist on our Office Hours videos. And um, you could register at our Luma events page. And you'll also see what I've shared in the Tea Time channel is uh, where we put the office hours notes after they're completed and published to our site. So my name's Derek, and I'm the Dendron Evangelist. And I help lead these office hours to show off highlights of recent releases, but also to kind of go over Q&A, community Q&A. So, um, and that's me. What about... Kevin, at Kevin, feel free to introduce yourself to. Uh, yeah, and I'm Kevin. Uh, I'm the founder, and I am here to. Uh, well, you see me in videos and probably around the Discord. I'm just here to support uh, Derek and answer any questions people might have. Um, and stuff. So. Sweet. With that, back to you, Derek. <laughs> Alrighty then. Yeah, I'm gonna just jump right into uh, some of our our feature highlights and uh, feel free to ask questions in the tea time channel in the meantime, and we'll make sure to get to them too. All right. So we got change workspace, initialize workspace. I also have release note links here. So why don't we jump right in to I'm going to use our onboarding repo here. And I have to share my screen here, too. <laughs> you can just walk us through what you're doing. We'll visualize it. <laughs> Imagine in a world. All right. So uh, here I am inside of our onboarding repo to just kind of test out. But some of the cool things we've added are related to the workspace, um, change workspace and initialize workspace commands. So I'm gonna do initialize workspace. And when I do it, I now actually get a nice file prompt. I'm not on Linux, so mine will look a little different than maybe what others are accustomed to. So I no longer have to kind of copy paste or figure out what my path is. I could just kind of go figure out, okay, I'm going to have uh, my office hours uh, workspace and that'll be that. And it'll shift right in. Do you trust the author? Do I trust myself? Today I do. So I'm now in and that's it. So it's a lot easier than before where you had to kind of go figure out where is this going to be located anyway. And this is the exact same for changing workspace. So I could do change workspace and I could jump right back. Yeah. So that's kind of a really easy highlight to show off. And, um, that onboarding repo too is a public repo. Uh, I think I'll add it to the notes too. So that we use it really as a playground and for demoing a lot of features. And Dude, that's that's huge. Right. I'll take her. Yeah. <laughs> we have uh yeah, I've done so many onboardings where the initial step is um how do I initial like how do I find my directory? So like it's a little thing, but it actually does make a big difference. Definitely does. Uh, yeah, so uh oh wait, and next I'm just gonna go over how our markdown import pod. We've had some improvements that make it cleaner, but I'm we're aware that other people may not have even done a markdown import pod before. I haven't used the feature. So I'll just uh, make use of it now to show off how um, how it functions and how easy it can be done for you. So let me go into that. Again, I'm just going to change to my new workspace that I just made. I might as well just do a fresh one. <laughs> Misspelled hours there, but hey mixed between horse and hours. All right. 
So now I'm uh, just in an empty workspace, really could, with my single vault. And if I want to import some notes that I have, I made markdown notes in the past on Kubernetes that I totally forgot about. So that works today as a good demo. So I'm going to take my Kubernetes notes, which there's a chapters directory on Docker. And when I you did the certified Kubernetes exams, I'm just going to grab that. We're cloning it. And I'm going to increase the size of my terminal since I don't know how big that might show up. So from the root of my workspace, I'm going to make it easy for pretty much having a, uh, let's say, import source directory. Because this is where my markdown notes are going to be pulled in from and converted into dendron notes. And here I could just clone it. There we go. And... Yeah, that's all in there. Uh, so now, since I want to have it in here, I mean, all I have is my root note that is generated at creation. I'm going to use a uh, pod, sorry, import pod. Go into that. There's several options right now. I'm going to be going with the Dendron Markdown. That creates a basic configuration file that you have to fill out. The ones that are uncommented are required. So this is pretty much, where am I importing these from? Well, I already created a, uh, I already created a directory in here. And so, um, I could even just use this path. It starts from the root of your workspace because when you create configurations in a workspace uh, for pods, they are workspace um, relative. So starting from the root of my workspace, inside of import source, there's a directory for Kubernetes notes, and I want it to pull in that information. Fault name, I'm just going to go with my default that I have already here with fault. And there's a whole bunch of other options that you can make use of. Uh, that you could see in our docs. The one that I want to just show that's I think is pretty useful for this example is a custom front matter to add to each note. Because here I can um, uh, I could say uh, source and let me just get the the link to where that repo came from. So then. That way, all the notes that are in my vault will have this custom front matter that says, by the way, I came from here. And uh, that's just what I'm going to do. Just going to start with those options. And let me do import pod again with markdown. The second time you run it, it actually then goes to reference that config, uh, those config options. And now you can see I've populated a bunch of options here on like, Hey, here's the Docker certified associate notes. And you'll also see, I have that little custom front matter option of source. And I could have done other things. I could have maybe said um, that I could have put in the description that this was, this is, this came from an import pod or something, but uh, it's a lot cleaner. Now the imports have been updated where they, um, used to make modifications to the body of Markdown as part of the import, but now they leave them alone, except for like specific relative paths. So if you're pointing to like other notes. Um, and yeah, and just to point uh, to emphasize that, uh, Luke, I think actually you were involved in some of the earlier tickets regarding this. When we imported Markdown, we used to like format it. And so it would like replace like dashes with like asterisks and whatnot. And so now, instead of doing any of that, the only things that Dungeon will do when importing is specifically look for links and make sure that links are converted. So the same changes we've actually had for refactoring now for a while, we've finally ported them over to Markdown import. Yeah, and you can see that I uh, converted it to a hierarchy too, because I had a chapters directory and it added the files in which means if there would have been more subdirectories it would have just it used that same 
structure in the hierarchy for it. But pretty cool. Um, what else we got going on? Uh, Kevin, did you want to show off the lookup view and with uh, the lookup modifiers? Yeah, uh, I will. Thank you, Derek. Um, this is not because we're having issues with lookup view in Linux, but you know, <laughs> just give me a chance to um, not be useless. Um, let me find my screen. I'm going to go live. And you should see a screen. This is, I'm actually using the same uh, vault that Derek is using. So this is our onboarding vault. Um, so, and you too can be using this vault uh, if you just clone it. Uh, that's the nice thing in Dungeon is that you can share these vaults. And the thing to uh, showcase here is right now when I do a lookup, you'll notice that there's this little modifier, uh, well, this lookup view pane on the side. Now this lookup view pane, if you actually use the modifier buttons, then it's nothing new. Um, it's the same functionality as the modifier buttons, except now split out and with uh, more description of what everything actually does. If you've never heard of modifier buttons and are asking, you know, what, what is this? Then the lookup view is for you because we realize that the modifier buttons, we have a lot of things in Dungeon that are quite undiscoverable, but the lookup modifiers are definitely <laughs> among the top of the list. And so this um, helps you uh, uh, discover what these do. So for example, when you create, um, when you are creating a new link and you have a selection, what you can do is you can turn that selection into a link or you can extract that selection. So if we do an example of this, let's go to our VS Code talk. Um, if I do this by default, I'm extracting it. So now if I wanted to make this into a new note, um, we're extracting the contents into the new note. But um, another behavior that we can have is to turn it into a link. So uh, let's do a selection. We do a lookup. Um, instead of selection to extract, we do a selection to link. And now when I create the new note, um, if I go back, you'll notice that this uh, the selection has been turned into a link to the new note. So there's all sorts of modifiers that do different things. Um, and now you have little tool tips describing what they do. Um, there's also other uh, effects you can have. For example, you can turn the selection into a multi-select. So now if you wanted to, to select multiple fields, you can do that and open them all at the same time. Um, there's, a, there's even more if you... Um, decided to, you could, for example, open up a note into a split. Um, and then something else is if you use a lot of schemas, um, you might notice like you have a lot of plus, you might have a lot of like plus signs, which are like stubs. You can filter out all the stubs by applying the direct child filter um, in a lower level to uh, limit the number of results that you see. So you only see direct children instead of everything. Um, so in terms of the lookup view pane, like if you already use these modifiers, either through the lookup or through keyboard shortcuts, they're nothing new, but this just makes it a lot easier to discover. Um, and in the future, we'll also add additional uh, items. Like for example, like creating a node, creating a journal node, creating a scratch note, um, these will be uh, toggleable from this lookup view and it helps a lot especially with like your first initial dungeon experience um, just by making things a little bit more obvious so, that's the lookup view Wait. well i could uh right. yeah i could jump right into the the remaining items we have on there too and anyone also feel free to ask questions in the tea time channel or if um so that we can make sure to go over any of those okay oh yeah we have the github pages and github actions documentation there's been some more review because some users had gone through and provided some more feedback so uh, we've done, we've applied some more improvements to the documentation, but also to the repository. 
we do recommend that uh, you use the when there's GitHub pages or GitHub pages with GitHub Actions. Uh, I have a note now here that says, hey, uh, the GitHub Actions path is pretty much the way to go. Uh, because then it doesn't store a bunch of the artifacts in your primary branch and you don't have to do a, a lot of the manual tasks that normally come with publishing uh and i wanted to make it i mean uh, kevin had done the initial work to get this up and working and we wanted to get it closer and closer to how like netlify's ease of use where with that template you're just sort of committing to the repo and then uh your changes are resulting in updates. And these have been all, if you haven't looked at these in a while, these have all been converted to GitHub templates so that instead of like forking or trying to do other stuff with it, you can create a brand new repository by clicking on use this template that will then be added onto your, under your GitHub account. And then from there you can make your modifications that you'd like. And, uh, we also have the generated sites, the example sites that these are making. Yeah, so those are some of the general updates to the publishing docs and uh, their workflows, which are also included in here in case you wanted to add um, these workflows to your own existing repositories or to even reference this template to see how are pub how's publishing being done. Uh, one of the things that was added is a user uh, there's, we didn't document how can I use that workflow template to add my custom domain name? Uh, because if you configure your repository to work with a custom domain name for GitHub pages, you do have to uncomment this line and also add that same domain name, uh, the C name, uh, which is just a bottom item. And that's referenced in here under our custom domain name section. But, uh, Yeah, outside of that, the last item I, I wanted to focus on too is that we do have a discussion going on on GitHub discussions about creating an awesome list because we've had so many links popping up, not just in our docs that we've been adding over time, but uh, people throughout the community saying like, hey, I'm actually, I have this little repo that has this cool script that helps me do stuff with Dendron or, hey, here's this extension I use that has helped me with Markdown and its conflicts with Dendron haven't been too drastic. <laughs> and so uh, I've been wanting to build this out for a bit. And this discussion has been pretty much building out the bones for the awesome list so that as people are providing feedback in the discussions and feel free to add to this discussion, your own um, links that you'd like to see added if they aren't already on there. And I'd like to keep growing it so that this will eventually become its own repository that is an awesome list. And if you're not familiar with awesome lists, they're pretty much like um, single page readme files of uh, resource links um, related to a specific topic and in ours or related to Dendra. So yeah, feel free to take a look at that. All right, so those are the main things I wanted to highlight. The uh, rest of this really is for anyone to make extra comments or ask any questions. Yeah, and also notice some familiar handles in this conversation. Uh, I want to say hi, like C Dude. Thanks again for doing the multi workspace workflow. I've actually been um, giving that out to like so many people this past week. And just wanted to check in on how that's going for you. Uh, I'm doing well. Um, honestly, my speech is a little off. Um, I had a medical condition recently, so I won't uh, speak too much to it. But I am just want to say that you guys are really, really uh, killing it, man. I really like to see uh, all of the progress that you're that you're doing. It so nice work. Yeah, thank you. Right. <laughs> yeah, and also I see some new people. 
uh, Moksha, I know that we had a DM going, but just wanted to say hi and um, let us know if you have any initial uh, questions or impressions. Yeah, and that can be here or <laughs> elsewhere. Actually, and also, I, Steven. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go for it. Well, I was going to say this. I was just... uh, <laughs> it's, you go first. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say one thing that has come up recently was uh, a few people were like, how do I move multiple notes at once? Um, and I've been wanting to update the docs on this. I might as well share my screen again, actually. <laughs> <laughs> because... Uh, um, I was having the same, I was kind of like, oh, I don't remember how you, how you can do this. And uh, Kevin, Kevin showed me the features that Dendron already supports that I just haven't put up in that uh, documentation yet. And that is that if you are going to, I could bring up my workspace. If you're gonna, I'm going to change my workspace again to the seed one because it's a really good example repo. And let's go to bash. And uh, if I wanted to move multiple notes, there actually is a multi-file selector. And so if I say I need to move note, moving notes, by the way, is a helpful command that if you're in a multi-vault scenario, and you're like, wait a minute, these notes I actually want in this other vault. Uh, you can click on move note. And by default, it's initially just looking at one note that you'd be moving. But up in the top right here of the move note, you could select, do a multi-select, which then allows you to start actually checking multiple boxes. And so then what this can do is that when you select them all and then you move them to a target vault, it will update all the backlinks too, so that not only are the notes being moved, but those references are going to be referencing the correct location. So I wanted to make sure to add that extra note since I know some people had been asking about uh, when moving multiple notes. Um, and this is actually a perfect example of lookup modifier buttons today are not discoverable. Um, it's been there for quite a while. Um, I forget about it a lot just because, um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's such a tiny little thing. Yeah, and speaking of that, if you're doing a regular lookup, you'll see you'll see all of these buttons here. So I mean, we just talked about that multi-select always being present, uh, generally being present, but there's some different filtering, copy note links, uh, all sorts of buttons here that you can play around with that you may not realize because if you're really used to moving around with lookup just to the notes you're looking for, you may not realize that those extra options are there. Yep, yeah, they are and we will make them easier to find and to use. Um, and um, oh yeah, I wanted to just say hi to Steven. It's good to see you again and check in on how things are going. Are you still using uh, 11T for publishing or have you moved on to Next? I'm doing Next and I, it's, I don't know how interesting this is, but uh, I've actually not used Actions uh, for publishing, but I've done something where I have a scratch repository, which I use in auto committing a script to automatically update as I make changes. And then I have a, a script that copies just, you know, the site um, once it's been uh, generated into uh, sort of a, a finish repo. And then that just overwrites their prior commit. So it's like a publishing repo versus a scratch repo. And I don't know if that's a template that you guys would like to include as an option. Yeah, I'm curious when you, the, so the reason for having a publishing repo, was that just because you found that to be easier to do uh, versus like doing a GitHub Actions instead? Um, I found it to be about as simple, I think, 
but I just wanted, I just like to have all of my changes um, recorded. And I, I also don't like all of my changes to be published. So I just, it's just a way of sort of keeping my own sort of storyline, but not having to have my entire storyline available for the public to read through. Mm -hmm. That's a good point that you kind of like promote having like a promote to prod kind of thing <laughs> when ready. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So I don't know. I don't know. I feel like a good proportion of users would prefer that sort of style. And I guess, yeah, I guess I could set that up as a template if you thought that would be worth doing. Yeah, I think the first place you put it actually is if you just add it to like workflows, uh, add it to the workflows channel. Because um, usually the way that things ended up coming to the wiki is they start off in workflows or tips. Uh, it gets added to the starboard and then it gets promoted to like a section on the page. Um, and that's like a nice progression because it goes from like very little upfront work to like a little bit more work putting it up on the page. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, no. Let it go. Stephen, the idea of keeping history around is really interesting because I, I was thinking about this the other day. I've got a lot of notes that I use as like living documents for how things are configured. And sometimes having the ability to send like a historical version of that page to somebody would be really, really interesting. Um, and I, I realize in the Netlify workflow, we sort of already have this because you have the per deployment URLs there, but we don't currently have a workflow, I think, that makes use of those. Um, mm -hmm. That might be worth looking at. That's a cool idea. Yeah, you have a snapshot of the page at any point in time. Um, oh, another thing I was thinking of now that we're talking about publishing is also having a change log. So you know, right now, when you the nice thing about the Git is that you have the diffs for every single time you publish. And so as part of a publishing step, you could actually opt in to publish pages that are essentially the diffs of when you publish. And then what's cool about that is like now it's not just every time you publish, you can point to like, here are the things that change. And then these changes are actually just notes that you can link to. So you can now actually refer to the changes. So if you write a blog post about, hey, like, you know, in this past post, I did this, you can actually do note references and whatnot of the change because the change itself is a note. Um, and it goes back to like, if everything is a note, then like every note has like everything you can do in Dendron. And so if we make diffs a note too and publish that as in a separate endpoint, where it's like slash change log, then that also opens up a lot of new possibilities. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, um, got a big backlog of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> but document all the things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Derek will document all of it. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Uh, let's see. We're getting toward the end here of office hours. Um, if uh, yeah, so what's going to happen next is that this recording will be uploaded to YouTube, and um, uh, the notes will also be uploaded to our site. I think like Friday when we publish um the our, our our updated docs which will include then the these office notes um yeah so everybody thank you for coming thanks for all the interaction thanks for the ideas and feedback and uh uh have a good rest of your day all right thanks everyone